So after making last night's videos, some things happened. I'm gonna start off with the good. There was something that happened that put a giant smile on my face and it has to do with those Gamo PBA Raptor pellets that I bought. I, I just could not head up to bed after making the video without putting something over the chronograph with those Raptor pellets. So, first shot I took, I set up the Caldwell. Here is the velocity I got over the Caldwell. I was hoping to post a velocity that was over 900 feet per second. I didn't expect to post a velocity that shattered 900 feet per second. So I decided to take another shot. This time I moved the Caldwell chronograph out of the way and shot over the Crony chronograph. Here's the velocity from that shot. Again, shattered 900 feet per second and a velocity that shows me that the crani is, was calibrated to the Caldwell, which I trust. So a couple of velocities that just put a big smile on my face, which is the whole purpose of buying those Raptor pellets. That's what I wanted to see. Like I said, hoping to see something over 900, not expecting to see something as far over 900 as the numbers I just showed you. But then another thing happened. With the drop in pressure from taking those first two shots with the KTHPA, I thought it would be worth it to top off the tank and see if that velocity repeated. So I went to top off the tank. And unfortunately, I could hear hissing. Putting the gun up to my ear, uh, but the mid middle section of the gun up to my ear, I could hear hissing and I could have sworn it was coming from that breathe hole breather hole in the regulator. The pressure went from 15 MPA down to approximately 14 MPA in a relatively short amount of time, but then the hissing stopped. I decided it would be best not to shoot any more out of the gun. Uh, I let it sit overnight came down this morning and found it to be around 12 MPA. So it obviously had a leak. Now, based on where I was hearing it and the problems I've had in the past, I figured I was gonna have to partially tear down the gun, tear it down the bare minimum that I needed to, to get to the tank and the regulator removed. So I did that. Basically, that allows me to keep the breech and the barrel assembly on the gun. So I did that. I replaced the O-rings, which didn't look too bad, but actually not too good. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, kind of flattened out, more so than nicked up, but very flattened out uh, in the regulator and removing the regulator from the valve internally. Those O-rings I replaced. I filled the uh, air section of the gun back up. But again, I decided I was gonna let it sit. Well, after about an hour this morning, it dropped. Again, from 15 MPA down to about 13 MPA. So I decided maybe I hadn't really done the right thing by just assuming that it was the O-rings in the regulator. 
So I did a water test. And sure enough, the water test showed, at least at this point, it wasn't leaking from the breather hole in the valves slash regulator. It was coming out of the transfer port. So I knew the problem was within the valve itself. Now that forced me to tear down the gun completely. The only way I was gonna to get to the valve was to remove the breech. The hammer and remove the barrel from the breech because of the transfer port. So after getting the gun torn down completely, taking apart the valve, the O-rings on the valve, and there's two of them, one looked, the larger of the two looked completely flattened out. Not nicked up, but flattened out like the ones that were in the regulator. The uh, smaller one that is a part of the valve was completely chewed up. So, O-ring replacement for the valve. Reassembly of the air portion of the gun. Bottle, regulator, Z-elbow, valve assembly. Again, put it under water. This time, no air bubbles. But, it got me to thinking as far as what I keep putting this gun through, I keep pushing it to probably its maximum. Whenever I fill it to 15 MPA, I'm pushing the absolute maximum. And when I think about it in terms of, say, like a car, an automobile, that is capable of 180 miles per hour. You don't drive it 180 miles per hour all the time. Yeah, you might open it up once in a while and see what it can do and make sure that it can do 180, but you don't drive down the street all the time at 180 miles per hour. As a machinist, another way to think about it is if a spindle's maximum RPM on a machine is 25,000 RPM, you don't write every program for every job you're gonna run in that machine to utilize a spindle speed of 25,000 RPM. It's going to be a short matter of time before that spindle is completely trashed. And those are examples of what I think I'm probably putting this gun through. I'm obsessed with velocity and power and I need to back off from that. I'm getting tired of having to break the gun down and do maintenance on it, pretty much specifically O-ring maintenance, uh, depending on where the O-ring that needs to be taken care of is located. It necessitates a partial or complete breakdown of the gun. Let me show you my work table. and even my floor. That's what's involved with a complete teardown of the gun. It's been sitting now for a couple of hours, as well as testing it underwater. I want to sit, make sure the gauge is not dropping at all. It hasn't before I start reassembling the gun, but that is the process I'm at. So, things happen. In this case, good thing happened, put a huge smile on my face as far as, like I said, the velocities I did get with the PBA Raptor pellets. But then, again, a leak problem. Bad thing. So, hopefully this is gonna hold up. I've learned a lesson. I am probably going to do most of my filling to 13 MPA. 
be satisfied with whatever it is I get as far as velocity and power numbers? Yes. Occasionally, I will open it up and fill it to 15 MPA and see what the gun can do. But it's just getting to be too much of a burden to completely tear down this gun and go through the O-ring replacement over and over. So stop pushing the gun to its maximum limit. I think I have a pretty good idea of what that maximum limit is. I fully admit to the fact that I've been pushing it to that limit far too often. I've learned my lesson and hopefully I've passed on some information that's helpful to you. So that's it for this particular video. Again, what I want to get to after the gun's put together and tested out is pellet testing. So I look forward to getting those videos done. Thanks for checking this one out. Stay safe and shoot safe.